Hi everyone and welcome to our first flip learning video all about negative numbers. I'm sure your attention is being grabbed by the chocolate biscuits in the middle of the screen. Um, they're obviously an example of a set of objects uh, which you could count. However, you could never have a negative number of objects. If I took all those biscuits away and I was left with none, I couldn't have one less. I couldn't have a negative number of, of biscuits or of objects. When we're talking about negative numbers, we're talking about numbers that you could maybe measure on a scale. So, for example, if I was in a hotel room and I was on the fifth floor, I could go down six floors and end up below ground level, essentially on minus one floor. Or equally, temperature. The temperature can be below zero. It could be a negative number. So when we're looking at negative numbers, we're really looking for numbers that you'd measure on a scale, which is why number lines are so helpful when we're calculating with negative numbers. So let's have a go at doing some sim simple calculations involving negative numbers. If I was looking to find the difference between 2 and negative 4, I need to always think about where 0 is in relation to the calculation. So um, I need to think, well, 2, how many more do I need to go back to get to 0? That's a gap of 2, obviously. And then 0 to negative 4, that's a gap of 4. So the difference between those numbers is 6. It's a gap of 6, which is obviously the 4 plus the 2. And you'd always give a difference as a whole number, not as a negative. Where if, whereas if I was looking at 3 subtract 7, I know the answer is going to be negative because seven's more than 3. I'm taking away more than I have. So I'd start with 3 and I'd realise it's 3 to get to 0. And then I need to think how many more. So I've taken away 7 in total. I've got to take away another 4. And essentially I've split the 7 up into a jump of 3 and a jump of 4. So here's some questions for you to have a go at that are to do with either adding or subtracting with negative numbers or finding the difference. So have a go, pause the video now and we'll have a look at the solutions in a moment. Okay, so let's have a look at your work. Um, for the first one, I'm going to draw these on a number line so you've got a visual representation. Um, if we start with negative 5 and we're adding 8, I'd be thinking, well, how many more do I need to add to get to 0? Of course, that's 5. And then to have added 8 in total, I need to add another 3, and that will get me to my answer, which is 3. Um, for the second one, actually here, the 0 isn't as important because, of course, negative 3 is smaller than 0, and I'm taking away 5 here, so I'll actually end up at negative 8. And then finally, when I'm looking at the difference between negative 2.5 and 5.5, I need to think, well, the 0 obviously there is in between, and the gap between negative 2.5 and 0 is 2.5, and then to 5.5 it's another 5.5 so I need to add up those two jumps essentially getting me to my answer of 8. So have a go here at filling in the missing gaps in these sequences. The questions as you can see are getting a little bit harder especially the last one but have a go and we'll go through the solutions in a moment. Okay so let's have a look. So for the first example I can see that the numbers are increasing by 30, we're getting closer to 0 each time, so I get to negative 50 and I add 30 and that will get me to negative 20 and then I need to add another 30, so I'll need to add 20 to get to 0 and then another 10, so I've added 30 in total, so that will get me to 10. Uh, on the second example, you can see the pattern of the 2 and the 7 and the 2 and the 7 and the 2 in the units column. However, that changes when we go over 0 and the number becomes negative. We're taking away 5, and so to take away 5 from 2, I'll need to take away 2 to get to 0, and I'll need to take away another 3 to get to negative 3. And then negative 3, I take away another 5, and I'll get to negative 8. On the example below, we're taking away 13 each time, so similarly, 17, if I take away 13, I'll be left with 4. And then 4, if I take away 13, I've got to take away 4 and then another 9. So I'm splitting the, the jump of 13 into 4 and 9, which will get me to negative 9. The last question is slightly harder, because the difference between negative 3 and 15 is 18, but this time it's split between three jumps. So I actually need to divide the 18 
by those three jumps so I know that each jump is a jump of six. Now personally I would rather work backwards here and go 15 and take away the six to leave me with nine. Nine take away the six leaves me with three and I know the answer's right because I know that three take away six is going to give me negative three. I hope you're still with me. And now the final question is this one. Um, have a go and see if you can work out the first negative number in the sequence. We'll play the solution in a moment. So there's lots of different ways you could have gone about this one. I hope you didn't try this, um, which is going 688 and taking away 7 to get to 681, because it could have been very, very long and slow, 674, and, and so on and so on. Um, I hope you realise that actually I can take much bigger chunks off. So, for example, you might have tried to take off 70s, or even a multiple of 70 to take off many more at once. My suggestion actually would be to start from the 702 and realise that actually if you take away 7 times 100, you've taken off um, 7 100 times and so you will get to the number 2. Number 2 will be in the sequence and then from 2 I'll just need to take away another 7 and that will give me my solution, which of course will be negative 5. Well done everyone, if you've got there, that's fantastic. Thanks for watching the flip video, and we'll see you in class at the start of next week. Bye everyone, over and out.